Hi there. If you follow me on Twitter, you might have noticed this tweet from about a month ago, where I shared this incredibly nice and well done resource on a quick and straight to the point tour, how to implement genomic prediction in R done by Miguel Perez and CISO. It is a really great resource and learning material. So I think it deserves more attention. Therefore, I make a video about it. Everything we want and everything we need is here on this GitHub page. So basically, you just go there and follow the instructions. I will put this web page or this GitHub page also in the description below. If you scroll a little bit down, you will see more information about the GP tour and also instructions how to start it. In this video, we will be doing just that. So basically starting the resource and also giving a few additional pointers and information. What we will not do right now is to go through it point by point. That might be a topic for some future videos. Basically what you need to have and what is also specified here, you need to have installed R and R Studio. When you have done that, so you need to copy paste this part inside and install a bunch of packages that are needed to run the GP tool. So I have done just that and basically copy pasted this part and run it and well installed all these packages. If you are doing this for the first time and running GP tool for the first time, it might take some time, but it, well, it is well worth the effort. When you are done with the, these preliminary installations, then you need to install the GP tour itself. Well, GP tour itself is also kind of a R package sort of. So basically you need to install it with these two lines. This is also what I have done. I copy pasted these two lines and run it and installed the actual GP tour on my computer from the GitHub web page. And after this, nothing else remains than to start the GP tour itself. So this is a learn R resource. You will see it will open a specific window where you will have a lot of additional options and possibilities to read, learn, and do. Here, I would add that something that is not on the GitHub webpage, that either after this step or already after this installation step, so there is a let's say as, as some surprise packages popped up for me that uh, it prompted me to install three to more packages that are not here. I, at least they are not mentioned specifically. I just went ahead and installed those as well and everything was working. But let's go forward and start the GP tour itself. So as I mentioned, it's kind of sort of a package. So there is, you load it with the library command, also load the learn R package and just run GP tour via learner with this line. So basically you just highlight all this and press run. And then when it's all, everything is done, there is this new window that pops up that has the actual content in it. Here, I also want to emphasize that starting GP tour with these few lines is not an instantaneous action. So it doesn't take long, but it takes like 10, 20, maybe 30 seconds to start depending on the computer. So if you start it and for some time nothing happens, don't worry, just it takes a little bit of time. But then you get this window. Now this is uh, good and everything, but uh, well, we can do better. And here is this quite nice uh, button here, it just says open in browser. So you just click that and it takes you to your predefined browser where you could actually read it in a much uh, nicer way. So here, then you can go forward reading it. So then there are the highlighted parts are links. You can follow up on, on the left side. There is this menu here. So you can click through and read about uh, the specific parts of the resource and then follow up on them. Also, I want to mention that this is an interactive resource, meaning that you can actually do stuff on it yourself. So if you scroll down, there are these parts here, and these are actually working R windows that execute stuff and, and, and do stuff as you specify. You can also modify them. So they, they show you something that you want. The enter resource is pretty straightforward. So it's, if you are not prompted to, you are not really obliged to, to touch any of this. 
but basically just running them with this run code command. So when you press it, it executes. Now I want to also say it, it was a bit confusing for me at first. So basically you run the code and nothing happens. I mean, that is because this part is just defining the data. So it, it doesn't, uh, doesn't show anything. It's actually necessary to execute. So for example, for the next part, for the PCA plot, the data is already loaded. So, well, this part is then about plotting the data. So you, and you press run, it actually shows something. So you see there is a new graph created that actually, well, shows something and there is a description to it. If by chance you experiment or something happens and you tend to delete some of the stuff or, or you change something, so you're experimenting and suddenly it doesn't work, you see now it's, 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 it's gone. But then there is this very neat other button here, start over, that comes back with the initial version. So just don't be afraid to experiment and see what are the things that are shown here. So for example, here, I always said print the Y vector. You know, it doesn't really <laughs> show anything or well, basically just a little bit playing around. So yeah, so you are encouraged to do so and encouraged to to play around with this data. There are also sometimes uh, exercises. For example, there is a blank window here and you are asked to do something. It, this is, these are kind of nice exercises within the resource itself. So as I mentioned, I will not go through the entirety of the, this resource right now. Maybe I will do so in some of the next videos, but I want to still point out a few things that might be useful for you if you want to, well, play around with this resource and also maybe dig a little bit deeper into it. There are two more things you can do if you are interested in, an, in a more background material and the script itself. So if you go back to the GitHub webpage, it actually also says here that the main code is in this gptour.rmd file. So this is basically the full script for the entirety of this GP2 resource. If you click on it, so it actually reveals the content and then you can scroll through and this is actually the entirety of the R script, what actually is then executed and which shows this really neat uh, learning resource that we have shown before. Also including, you see the text itself that is displayed there, but also all the code. If you're interested in the entirety of the package, so you can also download it. So also from GitHub, so it just says code here, and then you can click the download zip, which actually downloads totally everything from the GP tool package. After you download it and extracted that zip file, so you will see this one as its contents. And in addition to the file that you have seen before, there is also the data itself. So there are these dot files and also here the GP2 data in a, well, an R format and also in data chunks index. So it's, if you're interested in the data itself, so then it's also accessible after downloading the zip file. The data itself is also described in the data section of the GP tool so you can learn something more about it as well. The data itself is a weed data from CIMIT, and here is the link for the CIMIT website. So this is the International Maze and Weed Improvement Center. The data itself is described at the package manual page for the BGLR R package. So here is the link. So if you click on it, so you arrive to this page and actually you have to scroll a bit down at least for me. And so here is the description of the weed data set. And from here on out, you can also follow up to even more details if you're interested. Of course, it is nice to know details about the data, but it is not really necessary to be able to run this educational resource. I just mentioned it as a sort of an extra information. If you get to this stage, then you can read on from the beginning to the end and go through all the steps and all the exercises and learn quite a bit about genomic prediction. So I encourage you very much to do so and go ahead, read, 
and do the exercises and go through the examples and see what is it about. From my side for now, I thank you for your time and have a really nice day.